Happy Arvo. Hello. Focus. Focus. There you are. Hello. How are you doing? So I got an email from George. Uh, he sent me a couple YouTube links. We're going to be watching seven facts about Western Australia. But I did want to point out, I mean, he sent me this list of slang. Soda? You just call it cool drink? Cool drink? If I heard, I mean, I would think you wanted like some kind of cool looking cocktail. If I heard cool drink. Or I guess anything with ice. But that's crazy. Soda. Just cool drink. Now, Eastern calls it soft drink, which we do call it that. It's kind of like the more formal way of saying you want a soda. Or a lot of people in the U.S. just call it a Coke. Regardless of what you're drinking. Just a Coke. Anyway. Okay. So, <laughs> And you guys also call peanut butter peanut paste. <laughs> anyway. Seven facts about Western Australia. Sebastian... Ioan. All right, all right, all right. I didn't realize that like Western Australia versus Eastern Australia had a lot of, you know, parent diff I don't know, differences? Let's see. Welcome to Australia's biggest state. I'm turning these off. Western Australia. This state occupies the entire western third of the continent, covering some 2.5 million square kilometers. If it were to be a country in its own right, it would be in the world's top 10. It's also the world's wow. second largest country subdivision, second only to Russia's Saha Republic. But check this out. All this land is inhabited by only 2.6 million people and 92% of these people live in the southwest corner, most of them in and around the state's capital city, Perth. The main reason for this... Oh, and now I want to know. Population of Perth. He said 2.7, so almost all of them live in Perth. Interesting. ...is the climate. The central two-thirds of the state is a hot, arid desert. Mm, so it... That's a good point. I bet the climate is pretty different. I don't know, but I, I could see how it would be a lot different since the country is gigantic. Isn't the most welcoming place in the world, that's for sure. When thinking of Australia, things like political upheaval and secessionism are not exactly the first things that come to mind. But in Western Australia, secessionism has been a recurring feature in the political landscape. Really? The idea of... So you guys are kind of like the Texas of Australia. Okay, because Texas, you know, has, you know, peppered throughout history, threatened to secede <laughs> from uh, the United States. Self-governance or secession has huh. often been discussed, one of the main reasons being the fact that the federal government will generally favor the business and popular interests of the larger population centers. I did just realize that 2.7 million people live in Western Australia. It's the biggest state. It's one third of the whole country. But aren't there like 20 million people or is it 20 million population of Australia? 25 million. So compared to the, re the, the vast minority of people live in Western Australia, even though it's gigantic. Okay. All right. The Constitution of Australia, however, describes the Union as one indissoluble federal commonwealth and makes no provision for states to secede from the Union. Still, in 1933, the local government held a referendum on secession and 68% voted in favor. They then petitioned London to over Two -thirds. overturn the Act of Parliament, which allowed the creation of Australia, and grant them the independence the people had voted for. But the United Kingdom House of Commons refused to consider the matter, further declaring that it could not legally grant secession. The wait, wait, are we talking about secession from the United Kingdom or from the rest of Australia? Um... Because this ballot is talking about Australia. The issue didn't go further then, but it didn't go away entirely either. To the okay, we're talking about Australia. This day, this topic is still present in Western Australia. 
Perth is the capital and largest city of the state. This place is one of was was Australia part of the United Kingdom when it was first founded? I was a little bit, I don't know. I think I I was still thinking about the population and stuff and I don't you know, let's just keep going. The most isolated capital cities in the world. The it's closest beautiful. large city is Adelaide, which is 2200 kilometers away. Perth is actually closer to Singapore and Jakarta than it is to the nation's capital, Canberra. But don't be alarmed too much, they're doing alright. It's still considered to be one of the most livable cities in the world and one of, it looks pretty livable to me. of the richest, thanks to it being the headquarters of large mining operations located throughout the state. Madness, mutiny and murder. It might sound like the plot of an implausible Hollywood blockbuster, but the story <laughs> of Batavia is frighteningly real. This is the story of Australia's Batavia. bloodiest shipwreck. In October 1628, the Dutch East India Company's Batavia set sail from the Netherlands to Batavia on her maiden voyage with a cargo that included vast amounts of jewels and coin. But when closing in on Australia, they struck a reef, just 40 kilometers off the coast near the Hootmanabrolhos Island. Most survivors managed to swim to a nearby island, which is now known as Batavia's Graveyard. When the captain discovered that the islands were barren, he and 36 others left for Batavia, which is in modern-day Jakarta, in search for help. Jakarta. Once the commander departed, Geronimo's Cornelis began to plot a mutiny. Cornelis and his motley crew of mutineers sent anyone who might oppose their plans to other islands in search for water. Beginning with the weak and injured, Cornelis and his men began their mass murder. With their bloodlust still not satisfied, the mutineers hunted down the men sent to other islands. In total, 125 men, women and children were massacred. Cornelis kept some women alive to be repeatedly raped and tortured. Damn Cornelius. One man managed to escape and swim to the men sent to find water on Wallaby Island. With the alarm Wallaby raised, Island. word was sent to the commander when he returned from Batavia in a rescue ship. While still on the island, the mutineers were tried for their murders. After 10 days of... It's a crazy world we used to live in, huh? <laughs> like, what the heck is he talking about? This is nuts. Torture. They confessed and were convicted. Seven men were hanged and two were sentenced to marooning on the Australian mainland, making them the first ever recorded European settlers, although it's unlikely they survived. And with that, one of the darkest chapters in Australia's maritime history came to a close. Perth's King Park is the largest city park in the world. And yes, at 400 hectares, it is larger than Central Park in New York. Here you can wander and take in spectacular views of the Swan River overlooking Elizabeth Quay and the city skyline. There are bush trails, manicured gardens and Australia's largest display of wildflowers throughout the botanic gardens. It is the most popular visitor destination in Western Australia, being visited by over 5 million people each year. I need to see more. King Park. Ooh. Wow, look at that. That shows you how it's just right next to the city. Beautiful big park. That's cool. And why wouldn't it be? The many panoramas are excellent spots for that perfect selfie you're looking for. One of the greatest things Western Australia can awe you with are the pinnacles. 
What are these those? limestone formations came from the seashells of long dead marine creatures that were gradually broken down by the wind, leaving only these remnants behind. These pillars huh? are complemented by blooming wildflowers between August and October and a surprisingly rich fauna, including kangaroos, cockatoos, emus, and pythons. Nobody knows for sure how the pinnacles were formed, although several theories were proposed. More research is needed, which is understandable, since the area only received attention in the 1960s. Aliens. Western Australia is a harsh place, but it also has its fair share of natural resources and a booming mining industry. Located in the remote Kimberley region is Argyle Diamond Mine, the largest diamond producer in the world by volume and the only known significant source of pink and So most diamonds come from Australia? Or it's just, maybe not most come from Australia, but mm, this is the biggest mine in the world? Red Diamonds the Kimberley Coast is also home to Australia's largest producer of pearls. Two of the world's largest producers of gold are also in Western Australia. One of the largest That's pretty fortunate. open cut mines is the Super Pit at Kalgoorlie Gold Mine, which is 3.5 kilometers long. This thing is ridiculous. I've not seen anything like this in the US. But have most of you guys even ever seen a mine like this in person? This is just crazy. And 1.5 kilometers wide and a massive 570 meters deep, actually making it visible from space. <laughs> With so many resource abundant regions, it's really no wonder that Perth is home to the highest per capita of self made millionaires. Highest per capita self made millionaires in the world? Now that's an interesting fact. Highest per capita self-made millionaires in the world, in Perth. Huh. Well, that was some very uh, interesting, studious information there. Um, thank you for watching. Thank you for the suggestion, George. That was pretty uh, fascinating. Um, I hope to see you again. Let's, I'm, I'm going to go back look at the rest of these <laughs> slang terms real quick. Maggot bag is a meat pie. <laughs> that sounds so appetizing. The maggot bag. I thought meat pie sounded bad enough. Apparently, half of you call it a dog's eye. Or most of you call it a dog's eye. <laughs> but in Western Australia, they call it a mag maggot bag. This one makes sense. Poloni. <laughs> Poloni. Well, why would... Yeah. Actually, that doesn't make sense. Why do you... One part calls it Devon, and then the other Poloni. <laughs> Wait, what? You call a slingshot Shanghai? Like in China? And Ging. Hey, you've got a... You got a ging. Yeah, you got the kid a you bought the kid a ging for for Christmas. So you could shoot up shoot some rocks at the cups. You know what? Some glass bottles. I shot it with my ging. Anyway. <laughs> Happy Arvo. That's what I got today. Thank you, George, for this request. And thank you for watching. I hope to see you again tomorrow. Goodbye.